Hey, what is up you guys? This is Steffi, AKA in my humble opinion. And today I'm going to be reacting and reviewing episode four of The Crown season two. The episode is entitled Barrel. Also, before we begin, obviously I'm not in my room. I'm actually in like the kitchen area of my place because my room is really, really cold and there's a heater here. So that's why I'm filming here, just in case you were wondering where I am. But yeah, so without further ado, let's get into this episode. A wedding? We're at a wedding. I really like this song. I like the vibe of this episode so far. Oh, is this Matthew Good? This is Margaret's love interest. Oh, they just missed each other, of course. Wow, he's really into those close-up shots. <laughs> oh. Those old school cameras look like really cool. <laughs> Couples do that, don't they? They turn to each other and all we see is their backs. This is very me right now. Them is me. They were once a tank me on the pair of Same girl, same. I can give it again. Oh. Every city or friend of an army of children. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's getting a little carried away right now. Uh-oh, he's looking at you a certain way, girl. I feel like this is what happens so many times at weddings. Like all the single people are just like, well. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. How awkward. <sighs> I hope this is a Margaret-centric episode. I'm putting on my glasses. <laughs> Things are getting serious. Big anniversary parties, yeah. To celebrate changing our stride. Okay, I'm literally gonna have to turn on the captions because sometimes their accents are just like, it's too thick for me. I agreed to get married myself. What? Maybe <laughs> Wallace? Oh, damn, girl. Goodness. <laughs> you did it. Congratulations. So, is she gonna cheat on Billy Wallace with Matthew Good's character? Margaret. <laughs> oh, girl. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, don't forget you're talking to the queen. <gasps> Read him. Read him. It's the last time. I promise. Don't make promises you cannot keep. No. I'm determined to end it. It's time. Oh my god, are they like driving her to meet her little side piece? <laughs> I think birthday portraits should evolve and mature with age. Like the subject. Show change in the character. Complexity. Reality. Oh, oh that's basically like you know antithetical to everything they're right. doing in this photo shoot right now. She wants to believe her life has some meaning beyond chores. And this is hitting a little too close to home photograph. right now for Margaret. For one, she is lifted out of her miserable, pitiful reality into a fantasy. <laughs> I like how she shows up like that. <laughs> so announcement this evening. Unforeseen, sir, I'm afraid. Oh, uh, we can't be like this if I'm gonna marry you. Now, Tennant wanted to motor up to Glen to get his father's old pistols. This is very, like, Alexander Hamilton. One. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's the Ten Do Commandments. I like that. The next time I get mad at someone, I'm gonna say, take a look at this face. Ooh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right, Margaret. The extraordinary thing is, down there in the rough, in the long reeds of difficulty and pain, that is where you find the treasure. So I would like to propose a toast in the name of love. Oh, God, Margaret. In the name of, our <laughs> in the name of another ten marvelous years. Oh my god, poor Margaret. I give you my petit shoe. Wow, Prince Philip got some brownie points there. Elizabeth, the queen. <laughs> I feel bad for Margaret, man. <laughs> Damn, girl. <laughs> Dang, Ellis got her in her feelings, man. I'd like to 
say hello to our guest of honor, Her Royal Highness, the Princess Margaret. Hello. Hello. <laughs> They're like, um, we don't care who she is. Um, wow, these are like the hipsters <laughs> of, the, of the crown. Oh my gosh, I feel bad for Margaret. Oh God, I just feel bad for her this entire episode. Now she's like freaking awkward person that doesn't know how to socialize with normal people. Cause she's just used to like the royal family ways. <laughs> Oh, this is the cool guy. This is the cool guy. Matthew Good is the cool guy. Where have we met? They look good together, though. So A plus on casting. His name is John Perfume. Fucking doll. It's true. It's true. <laughs> but the older gentleman. Beside. Oh no no no! I know who that one is. That's John Bitch. Parent. My God, this is literally like the hipster people of the Crown that all do really cool things. <laughs> I really like that they're taking so much time in this scene, like letting us see them get to know each other. Like they're not really getting to know each other, but the subtext is that they are because by Matthew Good's character talking so much about other people, it's showing Margaret that like, he's a very observant guy. He's a very cool guy. He seems to be in the know of what everyone and who people are and what they're doing. Matthew Good's character is, I think he finds Margaret interesting that she's not like normal people. Portraits? Mm, I don't like that word. It's so stuffy and traditional. I'm sorry. Mm. What are they in? Perfect match. So this is a dream, I think. For people to show themselves the idealized version of marriage, just me. Wow, he's a... Uh... Okay, I can see why, uh, I can see why Margaret likes him. <laughs> Isn't it rather an intrusion? It's very much an intrusion, yes. That's exactly what photography is. All the while I'm getting closer and closer, and in the end it's kind of like, well, it's uh, an intrusion. Intimacy. I think it's really interesting though that someone like Margaret, who grew up in an environment, an atmosphere where the camera and the paparazzi it represents intrusion yet she falls for a photographer and he sees the camera as something different like he sees it as intimacy it's i think that's a really really cool idea that these two people who have such different relationships to the same object because that object represents two very opposite things to them they still are able to find a connection uh oh oh she's got that face she's like mm -hmm, i like this the five most important things I need to know about that man. Why five? I don't know. It's not like the right number. Why not three? I like it's these like interesting little interesting. sister moments between Margaret it's and the queen. One. It's like girl time. What was number five? Get it. That was five. No, Margaret, that was four. <laughs> right. Is it contempt in him? Like four. For me. Us. She if likes that. Know. I've heard so many people say, again, I'm American, but I've heard so many people say that that part of the reason why people want the establishment of the monarchy to continue is because they're a symbolism of escapism from the sad, dreary reality and mundane of people's everyday lives. But I think it's interesting that Margaret is attracted to that, even though she is part of that system. So it makes me question, does Margaret self-hate that particular aspect of herself. It's a very interesting process he has. I thought for a second maybe the camera is like taking pictures of her and she doesn't even know it so that it can catch her when she's at her most natural state, but I don't know if cameras back then had the technology to do that, so. I just love the quietness of this episode. I prefer you to be yourself, but I realize it's asking me impossible. You have no idea who you are. Look to the window. I do perfectly well. No, not the faintest idea. The rest of us, outside the palace gate. That's because we keep thinking of the fairy tale. Why would you care about the family? Have they been good to you? Oh. <laughs> but that business with Peter Townsend. <gasps> Oh, shoot. 
I like how when the camera gets closer, she gets like more uncomfortable. Just shows how much she despises the camera and what she thinks of like the intrusiveness of the lens. Oh my God. Oh, Margaret. Oh, Margaret. <laughs> Dang girl. Ooh, girl. Now he's talking about the vulnerabilities and the lens is getting closer. I like that. Back. Back to my place for a drink. Gosh, Tony is such an enigma. <laughs> he's really intense in one minute and then in the snap he is like this carefree Sir. whistling guy. <laughs> Couldn't you cheer her up a little? I'm Sarah McMahon, Prime Minister's daughter. What is she? What is? It's not. Bob Boothby's love child. No. 30 years that's how affairs been going on. Why don't the PM's know? Can you imagine? Oh, that's what we saw earlier. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I like that they kind of link that, this main storyline and right. that together in this way. Like, Gosh, interesting Jesus. reference. I like that. Ooh, I like the feel of his place, man. Ooh, what's this? I could see why Margaret oh, likes so him. I'm working on You can sign their names. Oh, their nicknames, yeah. Who's Tigger? Clearly. Like Tigger from Winnie the Pooh. Will you sign? Extra diamond to Paris. Oh wow, she's gonna sign her name with the freaking diamond. He is so hipster, man. Beryl. Beryl. Mm. Oh, that's why the episode is called Beryl. Okay, I see you, the crown. Oh, he was checking her out. <laughs> okay. I feel like Margaret weirdly likes being right. told what to do, but at the same time, she doesn't. God, I wonder, is that mirror somewhere in a museum? Oh my gosh, it's like all of women. Ooh. Oh, cinematography. Okay, okay, I see you, I see you. Oh, <laughs> okay. Oh my god, this is like... <laughs> I'm like holding my breath for her. <laughs> you talk to women? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, guide her. The whole routine is hard to practice and well oiled. Woman after woman has been here before me. Beautiful women. Oh, see, see, she sees the pictures too. No, could I've never seen before. No one's ever seen before. Um, are we gonna no. be able to see this camera? <laughs> Someone I would like you to send it to. Can I give you an address? Ooh, who's she gonna send it to? Her mother? Queen Elizabeth? Uh, what's his face? The guy from last season? I'm forgetting his name. You, uh, you come with the driver? Yes. He's waiting outside. Good, then you can follow us. <laughs> well, okay. This is giving me like Prince Purple Rain vibes, like when he told Apollodia to get on the back of his motorcycle. <laughs> I love this juxtaposition between the dreary routine of Prince Philip and the Queen back at the palace and then like Margaret living her best life on the back of a motorcycle. Wow, he is so smooth. <laughs> oh, she's gonna listen to her music again. Oh, this is the song from the trailer. Oh my god, I love this. I love this episode. Oh. <laughs> yeah, girl, get it. <laughs> Title card. 
All right, and some post-show thoughts. Um, I really enjoyed this episode. This episode kind of felt like a one-off in a way because it wasn't focused on Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip. It wasn't necessarily building on what was happening on episodes one through three, but I really, really loved this episode. I love the episodes in general that tend to focus on Margaret because she's just such a fun character because she's just so different from the other royal family members members and that she kind of loves to rebel against the tradition set by the monarchy. I love how they really took their time in the scenes with Tony and Margaret. I loved how quiet this episode felt and how just zeroed in on the two of them it felt. It really did feel like a very intimate episode. I just loved how within this episode alone, Margaret's character arc was really interesting because where she started in the beginning of the episode is so different from where she was at the end of the episode. First, 15, 20-ish minutes, she was like having her waiting to exhale moment about ready to tear her hair out and just like crying over the fact that she just can't find anyone. And then at the end of the episode, she kind of like has found someone who excites her in a way. I don't know if this is like the love of her life, but I mean, you know, based on this episode alone, it seems like they're a really, really great match. And it's really interesting that they're a great match too, because kind of like what I was saying dur during the reaction portion, Margaret's relationship with the camera and the lens is so different from the way Tony relates to the camera and the lens. Because like I was saying earlier, growing up as a royal family member and being constantly scrutinized by the public, obviously she would think that the camera represents invasiveness. But then Tony, he sees the camera as his way in. I'm not quite sure if he sees himself necessarily as an outsider. It doesn't seem like he has any disdain for being on the outside. It seems that he embraces that part of himself and I think that's why Margaret is so intrigued by that part of Tony because she is to the public seemingly on the inside yet she doesn't feel like she's in the inside she feels like an outsider to normalcy and then here is Tony who just kind of really doesn't care he just kind of goes with the flow overall I just loved the aesthetic and tone of this episode again I feel like yes this episode was true to the tone and aesthetic of the crowd but yet it felt really different. I don't I don't know how to describe it. It felt like really sexy. It felt really slinky. And here's the interesting thing too, is that I loved how this episode managed to be very slinky and sexy and intriguing, but it didn't require the actors or actresses having to do any really like out there scenes. You know what I mean? Like it was done in a very classy crown-esque way, which I appreciate it. And I think the fact that they didn't have to do those things is what made it even more appealing to watch. I love how obviously they ended this episode juxtaposing Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth's relationship with Margaret and Tony. Obviously Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip, it's sort of like they're at that point in their relationship where they've been together for 10 years. They celebrated their anniversary in this episode. So everything is kind of like mundane and routine and you know, the passion and the spark is kind of a little lackluster and even in their scenes I felt like in that portion of the episode the color seemed to be a little bit diluted when it showed Prince Philip and uh, Queen Elizabeth but then when they would cut to Tony and Margaret even though yeah they were separate you felt like this passion because the relationship is just in the beginning stages it's still young and exciting and it was just so much fun to watch this episode I, I really did enjoy it I've only watched four episodes so far, but it's one of the favorite ones I've seen. I really liked episode two and episode four so far. So yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed this one and I can't wait to see more Tony and Margaret. Alright, so my question for you guys is, just based on this episode, I know it might be hard for some of you who've already watched the entire season two, I want to know what do you guys think of the pairing of Tony and Margaret? That's my first question. And I also follow up question want to know which pairing do you like better? The Margaret and Tony pairing or the Margaret and Peter pairing from season one? Based on what I've seen in this episode, really, really, really love the 
Tony and Margaret pairing. I just, for me personally, think that Matthew Good and Vanessa Kirby look so good together. Like physically, they look great together because they're both like fairly tall and slender. And then they have really, really great chemistry. Not to say that, you know, Vanessa Kirby and Ben Miles didn't have great chemistry last season, but for me, I mean, like I felt bad when Margaret wasn't able to be with Peter in season one, but I, I don't know, this might be mean of me to say, but I just don't think Vanessa Kirby and Ben Miles looked that great together on screen, but this pairing of Vanessa Kirby and Matthew Good on screen together playing Margaret and Tony respectively, it's just like, they look so good together and their chemistry is so good together. So I just wanna know what are your guys' thoughts on the pairing. And that's about it for this week's video. If you like this video, please give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and please turn on the notification button so you know when a new video from me comes out and comment down below your thoughts on this episode alone. No spoilers, please. And as always, everything I said was just my own personal thoughts and all of my humble opinion. And I will see you guys next week with another reaction review to The Crown, or you can check out my other videos as well on my channel until then. Okay, bye guys.